Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm going to tell you a story about um, my pregnancy, which I thought was going to be easy. And um, my vision was that I would have the baby in a pool of water, and it would just like kind of fall out with no pain or anything, <laughs> um, and then just sort of swim naturally away. And <laughs> that my friends were going to um, like be feeding me organic strawberries and stuff. Uh, and it was so not that, because um, I was stuck in Long Island, in like Stony Brook, Long Island. Uh, that was one. And then two, um, I was immediately put in the high risk clinic. Um, and, and then three, I got sick immediately. Like I got nausea that was like beyond anything you could imagine. And it, it didn't stop. Like it, it went on, like as I delivered, I was nauseous. Uh, so anyway, um, I went to the, to the doctor because I couldn't take it anymore. And she gave me this nausea drug called Compazine. And it didn't really help very much. So I just kind of suffered through the pregnancy. And uh, I was so sick that I was staying at my mom's house, who lives in Long Island. And she's black, but she um, looks and sounds like a little old Jewish lady. And she, uh, so one day, she asked me to go get the mail. So I walk outside. I'm about five months pregnant. And I looked bad just as it is because I wasn't feeling well, so I couldn't take care of my hair. So I looked like, I don't know, this, this might be dating myself, but like Leroy from Fame, or <laughs> like I just got out of lockdown. So that was already embarrassing to my mother. Uh, but then when I went to go get the mail, I put my, I put my, I tried to put my hand in the mailbox. And, and, and I, you know, send a signal to my arm to, to get the mail. But when I did that, instead of going in the mailbox, my arm just kind of floated up to the sky and then just stayed there. And I was like, huh, okay, that's weird. And then the other arm just kind of floats up. So I'm just confused because I'm thinking that this must be some sort of pregnancy thing that no one ever told me about, where your arms fly up. Um, so I'm just standing in front of the mailbox with my um, lockdown hair, and my mom comes out, and of course, it's never like, are you okay? It's all about the neighbors. So she was like, oh my God, get in here. The neighbors are gonna see this. So I come back inside, and I said, you know, is there some kind of a pregnancy condition where your arms fly up? And she said, people have been pregnant since the beginning of time. And I have never seen anyone's arms fly up. Put your arms down. <laughs> but I couldn't. And then maybe 10 minutes later, they float back down. So this keeps happening. And uh, the next time I'm trying to go down the stairs, and as I go to grab onto the banister, my arms fly up. Of course, my mom walks by and sees this. Um, <laughs> So she, and you know she said you really need to go to a doctor, but I didn't. I didn't want to go to the doctor because I was like really concerned. I was like, what could this possibly be? Like whatever it is, it can't be positive. So I just like I don't want to know. So one night I'm uh, I'm sleeping and I have this dream that I'm running down the street in Europe, and all of a sudden like the streets are. They were like cobblestone streets, and it seemed real. Like it wasn't, it, it felt, it really seemed like I was in Europe. And when I tried to wake up, I couldn't. Like I was awake, but the dream continued. Like it just was still going. So I could see where I was in my mother's house, but I could still see the streets of Europe. So now I don't want to tell anybody this because this is really, this looks really bad. So I don't even want to go to my mother and say like, not only are my arms going up, but I'm kind of like in Europe right now. <laughs> so I'm just trying to act casual. Um, and, 
you know, and that night at the dinner table, it's like, you know, there, there go the arms, and like I just had to wait for them to come back down before I could finish eating. Um, and I got really hungry because it was happening a lot. So then I had the same dream, but now I'm awake. And I could see the cobblestone street, and I could see myself, but I, I wasn't myself. I was a 15-year-old uh, Jewish girl with a, like some sort of like a, just a dowdy outfit on, and I'm running for my life down this cobblestone street. And I get sort of backed against a wall, because I, I, I'm like, it dead ends, and there's nowhere for me to go. And I turn around, and there are Nazis standing in front of me. And I know that intellectually that that is not happening, because I can see my mother's dishwasher. But I see Nazis, I feel Nazis. Like, I, I, I felt afraid from, like, just from the core. And the, the fact that it wasn't real, it, it didn't matter. Like, I was there. And it was really scary. And my arms were up, and that just didn't help. So this keeps happening. I'm, it just, like, repeats. And I'm always trying to get away from the Nazis. And they're, uh, you know, they're spitting at me and they're insulting me and they, uh, they make me get down on my knees and they're threatening to shoot me. And, and so I'm just, I'm, I'm in agony because I, I don't understand this. I'm still nauseous. I, you know, I don't, I just, I just was like, this is the worst pregnancy ever. So, so finally, the Nazis, you know, back me up against the wall again, and they threaten to shoot me. And this time, I don't try to get away. I say in German, which I do not speak, that do what you have to do. Like, if you want to shoot me in my head, you shoot me in my head. But I'm not, I'm not going to be afraid of you. Like, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of showing uh, fear, um, but so do what you have to do. Uh, and then they went away. But I got really scared, so I, I ran out of my mom's house, and I grabbed the keys. I grabbed her keys, her car keys, but it wasn't easy because my arms were up, so I had to kind of do one of these numbers. And I run out like Superman, onto the lawn and I get in the car and I'm like this and I just like peel out. And my poor mom, my poor mother is like, comes out onto the driveway. She's like, where are you going? But I just, I couldn't, I didn't even want to wait for her to take me to the hospital. I was just like, I'm turning myself in. So I get to the hospital. I don't know where to go. Cause like what department would that be? <laughs> Nazis and you know, flying arms. So I was like, well, I'll start with the labor unit, you know, even though I'm not ready to give birth, but let's see what happens there. So I, I go to the labor unit with my lockdown hair and my arms, and I'm like, okay, I know this looks bad, <laughs> but I'm pregnant and um, my arms won't go down and I have a Nazi on either side. And she's like, all right. And she's like pressing the button. So security comes and carts me away, and they take me downstairs uh, to this really nice place, which some of you might know is the psych ward. And they take away my shoes and give me these rubber slippers. And so now I'm in a glass room with my arms up. I'm separated from the other people because I'm pregnant. And they can see me through the glass room, all the doctors. So I don't, you know, I want to get out of here because I'm not trying to give birth in the hospital. So I'm just trying to, you know, you know, make it look like I'm okay. It's not really working. I'm in there for four hours. Finally, the doctor comes in with the nurse, and I know this is like, you know, I, I, have, to, I have to let him know, like, that this is, that I'm not crazy, because I don't, I can't be in the psych ward. Um, so I said, again, I know this looks bad, and, and, and that my arms are up, 
right now, but at least I'm aware of it, so I feel like that should count for something. And, uh, and I know that the Nazis aren't real, that are on either side of me, so I'm not crazy. And he's just writing stuff down, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be locked up. So I start just throwing out anything that I can think of that maybe could help. I was like, uh, you know, okay, I had some orange juice this morning, uh, some soup, and I, I also I took my compazine for my nausea, and then the nurse says, oh my God, compazine, she's having a dystonic reaction. So apparently, compazine can cause weird body movements and horrible hallucinations uh, in maybe 10% of the people who take it, but nobody told me that. So I had actually taken some before I went to the hospital so I wouldn't be nauseous. Uh, and then they said, don't worry about it. it you know, once it wears off, you'll be fine. Um, if you want, you could take Benadryl. I'm like, don't, don't prescribe anything else, really. <laughs> Um, and it was scary because I'm five months pregnant and you're giving me something that's causing like a, a Nazi syndrome, like seriously? So in conclusion, I, uh, I want to say, you know, be careful what medicine you take. Uh, but uh, my daughter is sitting in the back, so she's fine. She's not looking up, but um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it ended well, but... Um, yeah, but it but it but it was that was yeah, that was wow. Thank you. Thank you so much.